hang on, I, I want to record this. I want to record this because last time we didn't record our tax chat and, and I have regretted that ever since. So what's wrong with the Terry's chocolate orange? For being uh, the... I, I love orange, but I also love my chocolate separate from things. Yeah, so do we. Most... At least we don't mix it up with peanut butter. I mean, that's just... Oh, what? That's oh, all kinds oh, of wrong. This is why we left, Sean. This is why we left. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking savages over there. Hey, I, I tell you what, though. You, you, you've butchered our language. You've got enough. It's fine. I have a degree in butchering your language. language. You're welcome. So that's all I'm saying. Good start. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to uh, Review Yourself. Um, by the way, just in case the sigh has been in for quite a while, I podcasted earlier with people I haven't spoken to in a while, and they were like, is that new? Or are you just not want to do this? I was like, no, it's, I do that. It's my introduction. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm here with Mark from the Visually Stunning... No, yes, Visually Stunning yes. Movie Podcast. I was right in that... No, because I've lost my I'm here with Mark from the Visually Stunning Movie Podcast. Uh, he's returning. We're going to be talking Looper, uh, Ryan Johnson's. I didn't even write down when it's from. I think it's like 2009, 10, 2012. Is that late? Well, I didn't know it was that late. It's not, it's not even that. Yeah, it's not even that old. I mean, it's 10 years 10 old. Years. You stop and think about it. But yeah, in the grand scheme of things, no, it's not really that old. No, it's not too bad. But uh, yeah, I've literally just finished watching it. Uh, that's why I was a bit a little bit late starting. And yeah, um, I don't have any notes. I've got nothing. So over to you, Mark. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, yeah, it, this is. I think honestly, this is the first time I've seen this since I watched it in cinemas. Like I watched it in cinemas, really liked it. Bought the DVD, put the DVD in my case with everything else, and never watched it. Um, so it was, was nice to to revisit it. Certainly, a lot more of a thinker than I remember. I don't know how you felt. Like, was have you, have you just returned to it, or have you watched it recently? Or like, uh, well, once once you picked it, I went back and rewatched. I didn't see it in the theaters. Uh, there was a time, probably in the 2012s, I didn't go to the movies a lot. I mean, I had a I, I had a kid that was under 10, uh, so movies were not, you know, in theater were not a big deal the way they are now that I'm old and have all kinds of free time on my hands. But uh, I had I had seen it, but I hadn't really watched it per se so i had to i had to find it i don't even own it which is odd i own just a literal metric ton of of movies but uh which is weird because i'm american um but but yeah I had, to, I had to go find it on streaming so i was like okay so i so i watched it. i was like oh yeah there there's some good stuff in here i was like and i'd forgotten this is you know this is kind of the movie that well it's not kind of it's the movie that put ryan johnson on the map uh and eventually made you know, got him to where he wanted to do a Star Wars movie. So, oh yeah, yeah. I thought I'd heard his name when I saw. I mean, because I'm not a big Star Wars person. Well, I'm not a Star Wars person at all. When I when I saw his name, I was like, "That's familiar," but I don't know what he's done. He did the Last um, Jedi. Yeah, but he did a lot of shorts before that, and he done he had done one feature called Brick, uh, which I have not seen. So I, I suppose I'll have to. Uh, go check it out, even though it doesn't sound very appealing from the synopsis. Uh, but no, but this one, I, uh, you know, we get, a, we get a time travel movie, which is great, because uh, who doesn't love a good time travel conundrum? Um, and anytime you get a movie with time travel, it's always fun to see how they, uh, how they decide to handle it, and if they can, how they try to avoid some of the the, uh, the, the pitfalls and the paradoxes of, of time travel in film, and they all have them. And I think that's what I'm going to wind up spending most of my time talking about mm -hmm. is talking through his time travel. Well, and, this, uh, sorry. Uh, no, and, and, and trying to figure out if he actually pulled it off better or worse than others. I think this one does that thing of, look, we're not going to, we're not going to look into it too much because it, it's confusing. And I like the fact that it uses the biology of human brains to kind of say, look, I can't even get my head around this. It's a mess. I'm trying to explain it. Um, so I think it swerved it nicely. Yeah. Um, it knew like we can either tackle it or we can ignore it. And they thought, right, well, let's they went for quite a nice middle ground and the execution I felt was for me. I was like, yeah, okay. I don't want to be told everything. Um, sometimes I like a little bit of mystery um, because I think the mystery is better ultimately than what somebody can write 
doesn't matter how good a writer they are, you, you only got to look at Doctor Who and what's happened with that to show that some questions, you know, the question that should never be answered, um, something should never be answered. Uh, the mystery is better. Uh, that's just my two pence worth anyway. No, I, I, I get it. The, 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 the first, I think the first step uh, or the first rule that filmmakers need to, to stick to when they're doing time travel is don't explain how time travel works yeah. because it is completely irrelevant to, to the story that you're telling. I mean, literally, if you're trying to explain the mechanism of time travel, that you're doing it wrong. Uh, I, the closest any film has actually gotten to trying to explain it and doing it in a way that kind of works uh, was uh, Synchronic, if you haven't seen that one. No, I've never, uh, I've never came out, it. Came out last year. It, it's Anthony Mackie and... Uh, shite. Uh, <laughs> uh, from Fifty Shades of Grey, Jamie Dornan. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, they 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 kind of got into the why it works, not necessarily the how it works. Um, and and I actually I really enjoyed that because I, I thought that was a really interesting way to approach it. But yeah, but filmmakers need to remember: don't explain how it works. You just need to deal with the you need to deal with the why or with with the what happens after and the consequences of. Yeah. And so you know, Terminator. Try, they went as far as I care for most films to try to explain how it works. They, you know, the, the artificial intelligence figured out how to time travel. It's like, good, I'm it. Because, you know, no person is going to figure that out. Um, you know, and then, and then they just let it go. So, you know, that works. And Synchronic, it's a little, like I said, it's a little different. They, they do, they tied the time travel to biology, which I found intriguing. And, and that's why I think their explanation worked a little better. And this one, it's like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And I love the fact that um, this movie basically says what every time travel movie uh, needs to remind people is that people are like, well, time travel hasn't been invented yet. And it's like, if time travel it exists, it exists everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it, it sounds really basic when you say it, but it's 100% true. If time travel has ever been in invented, it exists everywhere. And so that's, that's the key thing with Looper. Time travel exists everywhere. Yeah. They have just, uh, the way it's implemented here is that um, it's, it's, it's very, I mean, it's looped. Uh, it, it's very limited in its application by criminal syndicate who control it probably better than any governmental industry or scientific community could. Uh, the criminals, no, we, they, the technology was out of the bag. They got hold of it and it is very tightly controlled. So, and like I say, you know, say what you want about criminals. Once they decide to control something, that shit is pretty much under control. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, here we get this, this tightly closed loop uh, of a, a, a amenable people that sign up for this. And, and, and so that's the story we get. And you see the ramifications of deviation. Mm -hmm. from that and that is what time travel movies need to address yes yeah. the ramifications of time travel and the the consequences of failing to follow the rules that you establish for your time travel whatever those rules are yeah um and this especially in this one i think i think ryan johnson was great when he wrote uh paul dano's character yeah um because you you literally get a firsthand uh look at the consequences of deviation. Now you can get into all the philosophical arguments that the Hulk tries to make in Avengers Endgame about time travel and your 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 new past cannot become your future and this and that and the other thing. Um, but it, it 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 is a way to close a temporal loop, and I think it's really well done. And I really and it, and, it, and it's starkly illustrated. There's no gray area. Ryan Johnson makes the rule, puts his foot down and says, this is how it is. Yeah. And that's how it is. Yeah. That, that's what I like. I like about films like this. And they don't come along very often when if you're going to make a rule book or you're going to make a universe, stay within the realms and the laws of that universe. Just no matter how ridiculous and people are on board with it, it's when you start just throwing stuff in for the sake of it. Um, it's a very hard film to work, to define this for me in terms of a genre. It feels almost like a kind of sci-fi, then it feels like, like a gangster, like a gritty. It's a very 
interesting kind of film. And I think um, if, if there's definitely kind of not homages as such, but there are like influences of Terminator, especially when Older Jaw starts tracking down. There's like three potential kids that this uh, rainmaker, this mob boss in the future yeah. who destroyed everything, um, who he could be. And Joe essentially goes, old Joe goes around um, like the Terminator and Terminator 1 with the phone book, except now it's a, a map that, they, well, it's like a, these date of birth things they've got um, and basically starts taking out kids. Um, which is, I mean, I'd forgotten that to be fair. <laughs> I'd forgotten. Yeah. I'd remembered the bit at the end with the kid, but I'd forgotten the fact he shoots a kid dead. I mean, and and they actually address well, Bruce Willis, so he like collapses crying, and it's all about. Yeah, that was that was. Uh, there's some quite dark themes in here, I think. Definitely. Yeah, and let's let's not forget he's not doing it well. Okay, let, let me back up. He's he's doing it for personal gain, but not for monetary gain. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of this stuff is, you know, a lot of, you know, you get time travel and gangster stuff and there's always some sort of money. He's literally doing it to save his own life. Um, to try to keep his, his, the, the woman that he loves in the future. So it's, it's an, it's an interesting motivator um, for a protagonist to go around shooting kids. Um, and you'll notice that if you stop and think about it, that this has got a little bit of an influence on Deadpool too. Um, the, the generation of the of the future monster killer. Uh, so that that's kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, the it it is dark. It's it's barely sci-fi. I mean, it, it's sci-fi in in its general premise in that time travel exists, boom, sci-fi is done. After that, it's, it's almost just kind of like, it's almost a, a, a noir thriller uh, with way more lights. But, but yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a darker, it's, it's more hard-boiled detective kind of, you know, because it is, he's, he's tracking people down. You've got, you know, how do you fight yourself, really, I think. And, and, and so it, yeah, it's it's weird. There's this very external, you know, battle of one, you know, what what do you want and what are you willing to do for it, and and does that change over time? Because that's really what we have. We have Joe wanting one thing now and Joe wanting one thing in thirty years, but Joe now has to deal with Joe in thirty years about what he supposedly wants. Yeah. So you know, it it it's an interesting look. I mean, you could you know, personal growth, emotional growth, uh, but yeah, it's barely. It's barely sci-fi, but I, I, I would tend toward noir. Uh, Ryan Johnson might not go as far as to call it noir, but I think he would agree that it's barely sci-fi. Yeah. And it, like I said, it's just sci-fi enough. Yeah, and I think... Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it feels like if... It feels like one of those films that once it gets to 2074, it'll probably be like, oh, yeah, all right, then. Like, we'll, we'll kind of... A little bit like films... Um, you know that the set, the set like 30 years in the future, which is like, I don't know, 2020, and then you get there and it's not too dissimilar. And you go, well, if you'd have made that now, people would kind of go, yeah, that's a bit silly, but it's mostly kind of real. So it was an interesting, interesting look at a future, but it's not a future that's particularly you'd want to live in. Um, I mean, there's that scene where a guy tries to, it's like people living in a school bus, like a big American yellow school bus. Yeah. And the guy tries to steal a dad's bags and the dad just turns around with his shotgun and just takes him out like, that's it. So it, no one bats an eyelid. You, you gather that life's very cheap um, in this world and the economics are pretty bad. And, um, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's like the city that, you know, I think Young Joe says something like uh, the main mob boss who's played but really well, actually, against character type, uh, Jeff Daniels plays him brilliantly. Yeah. Um, and he says, well, he, he's in charge of the town. If it was any other or city or whatever, if he was in charge of anywhere else, like he wouldn't be, but it's here. So you gather that this is probably one of the worst, worser kind of places, worst places um, in America that, 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 at that time, uh, 2074. But it still doesn't give you an idea that that world's particularly fantastic. Yeah, and, and that's what's great. Everything, it has to be, at some point, it has to be relatable to now, even if you've even if the entire film is set in the future. Uh, and it's yeah, Jeff Daniels is is surprisingly effective as a almost he's almost a world weary crime. You know, he he became this mob boss in the past, 
because he came back from the future to, mm-hmm. to run the loopers, but he was bored. So he wound up, wound up becoming the boss of, of now, which he has to, to know, he had to have known coming back that obviously that can't last. Um, he doesn't know how it ends necessarily, but he has to know that in the future, you know, he's, he's on a, he's on a leash too. So something, something, you know, so I, uh, in, in American sports, and I don't, I don't know if it translates to, to, to British sports or not, but there's a, there's an expression called playing out the string, um, you know, where, you know, you get to the end of a long season and, you know, you're not going to go anywhere at the end of the season. There's no playoffs, there's no championships. So what are you doing? You're, you're playing out the string to get to the end. And you just kind of feel like he's, he just did this yeah. because he's, he's kind of playing out the string because he doesn't really have anything else to do. I've got the British equivalent. It's um, it's going through the motions. You just, you just, yeah, you're just getting it done. Yeah. So yeah, it's just, it, it's, 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 it's weird, but he is oddly effective as just kind of world weary. Oh, yeah. Just, you know, it, it's almost like I hate having to get up in the morning and go to work and run the city. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so taxing. Um, I, do, I do like it when Jeff Dennis plays against Type Blood. I think he, um, I haven't seen him in that program that he did when he was like a news reporter. Um, I can't remember what that was called. I haven't seen that, but I, I did see him in The Martian with Matt Damon, where he right. played at the head of NASA. And he was very yeah. bureaucratic and very kind of like, look, this is what needs to be done. Um, so I, I, I did, I do like when he plays against type cause I think he's very good at it. Yeah. It's it, yeah. Especially in the Martian, actually, he's, he's very effective as the, as the, the, the bureaucrat that kind of, I think secretly wants to be more than a, than a bureaucrat. Uh, but he understands his role. So it, it's, it's a similar role. It's just one, he's you know running NASA and one, he's running a crime syndicate. So yeah, the, the end goals are slightly different, uh, but no, go, uh, just, Going back to Ryan Johnson, I think, you know, because he did write it and direct it. Uh, and, and I think, um, I think it's, it's a, it's a, it's a really solid, I'm going to call it first because I don't think it, whatever he did in 2005 mm-hmm. brick, I don't, I, I'll bet if I go and watch it, I, I would just destroy it. Um, but yeah, this is, this is That's a really it, Keep nice, it off mind. <laughs> I, I know I, I'd give it a shot, but money says objectively it would be terrible. Yeah. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, I, I, I think this, this is a, re- this really does show what he can do. So, and then you look at what he did after that, uh, you know, he did a few episodes of Breaking Bad, but then his next feature is The Last Jedi. So he caught, you know, he caught no end of grief, obviously. I have my issues with The Last Jedi, which are not the same as a lot of people's issues with The Last Jedi. Um, you know, but then he did Knives Out, which is just, phenomenal I've still not uh, seen that still oh not seen it oh my goodness nah. it, 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 that's just do you know why do you know why it's, it's wow. uh, let me guess you it, could not handle Daniel Craig playing Colonel Sanders thank you yeah no it's, okay. head. I get no, it's it. because uh, it's because and it's weird because I, like I can do a bit of an American accent right and it's terrible and I know it is but uh, when when you listen like you guys you, you might I don't know I'm not from the south you might be doing a brilliant southern accent for all i know but when i listen to him i can hear the the twinges of his original you know of his british or his english yeah. whatever you want to call it, accent underneath and it brings you right out of it it's a little bit like um natalie portman who's american i think when yes. she did uh, v for vendetta she i forgot i didn't realize she was american it whilst watching that film with my friend and then there's one line in it and she says one single word and i was like what why did she say it like that and my friend was like, "Oh, she's American. It, she's she's putting an accent on." And I was like, "Oh, like because that, but that was <laughs> it was that word." And she says, "Um, she says something like, I'll try and do that because it's English, but it's like not my English." She, she's like, "Well, my father used to wake me up with a with a slice of toast and some butter." And it was the way she said butter, and it was like, yeah. "Oh God, no!" You, straight away, I was like, "That doesn't sound right." Even for people from like Southern England who talk like that, that that doesn't sound right. So that. I saw the trailer and I was like, I suspect foul play. And I was like, no, no, no. I see. I can remember it. I can remember the line. Yeah. No, it's the, the, the thing about that one is, is it is a very, it, it's not supposed to be accurate per se. It's supposed to be evocative of a certain period of, of Southern life. 
Uh, and even if you want, really want to break it down, assuming that his character has a thick Southern accent, he plays it more to, uh, okay. you know, it's, it's very, uh, it's very Columbo, if you will, where you, the, the detective kind of plays a little stupid. Mm-hmm. So the hickier he sounds, if you understand what the expression hick yeah. is. Hick town, yeah. Yeah, so it, if, if he sounds a little more hick, corn poem, people might underestimate him, mm. even though he is this world famous detective. So, uh, you know, he's not Hercule Poirot, uh, where everyone knows that he knows everything and they can't help it no matter how ridiculous he, he looks or sounds. Uh, you know, so in, in, in Knives Out, yeah, that part of that is, yes, he's, he's English doing a southern accent but he's doing an exaggerated yeah southern accent so it's not supposed to and i, I lived in the south I, well okay, yeah let me let me let me back up i lived in texas um which is not the south that he is ostensibly from so i see i say that about danny craig's accent but i watched him in defiance uh, and i've watched that a few times and he he plays kind of like a belarusian accent over the top of his general yeah. and I, I can get away with that i can listen to that so well the, the great thing is cinema has allowed everyone to just acknowledge that people do eastern european accent yeah and they just let it go they're like oh yes eastern european got it we're there it doesn't matter how good and or bad mm-hmm. it is it's like got it you're doing eastern european cool uh you know if you watched house of gucci and you listen to all of those italian accents and how terrible they were um n- People will not let you get away with that. People will not let you get away with a with a bad French accent. But but in terms of cinema, Western cinema, if you are doing Eastern European, so you know, Russian, Belarus, you know, Belarus, you know, Estonia, all of the stand, you know, any of those, all the way over to Germany. If you're doing Eastern European, everyone lets you get away with that because you're just, it's just that part of the world and it's allowed to be a time. Now, is it, is it marginally stereotypical? Sure. And as soon as that, and as soon as that identity group figures out how to get people enraged about it, I'm sure that will go away, but, but that's allowed. So the Southern accent, um, people in the South understand that they have Southern accents. They don't care because they don't care. They, cause that's honestly, sure. Well, no, but well, because people in the South, and I say this with, with as much love as I can muster, they do not give two shits what people think about about Good. them, much less their accents. Yeah. So you know, they get up, they work hard, they go to work, they go to church, they have family gatherings, they cook a lot of food, and they talk like they're from the South. Mm-hmm. If you go up to the north, you know, you go up to the northeast of America, you know, your 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 New England, you know, yeah. New York, you know. Connecticut, Massachusetts, you get a whole separate, you go out West and you get these kind of slower, more casual accents. Like I said, I have this weird mutt of an accent, which is Northeastern Texan West. Mm. So but depending on where I'm at, it depends on where I talk. And I, like I said, I used to hang out with a guy whose parents were British. So, um, so I can hear a lot of that too. And, and if I'm around people, it, I have to stop myself, but if, especially if I go back East, I pick that stuff up. Yeah. So, yeah. So listening to people's accents is weird. And I could see where, and it, it, it often is one word. So I could see how Natalie Portman could just kick you out because yeah. especially if it's a common word. Cause yeah. I, I, I remember, I, I, I seem to recall her saying butter. Yeah. It's awful. And, it's like, and, and so. Well, I know she's American. So like I said, so I just acknowledge English accents. I, yeah. I may judge them in my head, but, but I, I mean, unless they're atrocious, I don't, I try not to let them take me out of a movie, but yeah, Daniel Craig in, in Knives Out is, is good. Um, the, the thing in, um, in Looper, we'll get back to Looper. We'll circle back. Um, nice. It's actually, I think set in the Louisiana area. If I recall okay. some of the stuff, right. So it is like deep South, almost Cajun, but they don't carry a lot of accents in this film. And I, I'm okay with that. Um, so uh, really in, in this, the only thing that you're worried about in it from a speech pattern, not getting really technical at, 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 on this film um, is, you know, old Joe and young Joe. So Bruce Willis and Joseph Gordon-Levitt need to kind of have the same speech patterns. You know, it's, it's been well documented, excuse me for that, uh, 
the it, it's been documented that, that uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt had some prosthetic work done to kind of match Bruce Willis's nose and his jawline a little bit. So they look because they do not have the same face shape at all. Um, but but a lot of uh, things like this you have to stop and think about when you'll see people playing older and younger when you have different actors playing people at different ages. Um, they they have to find these these traits that carry through. Um, Tom Hanks, uh, when he did Forrest Gump, said that yeah. he worked with the kid that did Forrest in the leg braces. Um, and a lot of Forrest's speech patterns came from the kid, the not kid, the other yeah, way around. Yeah. So, um, but, but it's those kind of things that make, uh, you know, I'll say multi-dimensional characters in a completely different way than we normally say multi-dimensional characters. Um, make make them uh, more real, more tangible, more yeah. identifiable as as a group. Um, and I think they did they did a good job uh, in that. Uh, even when they would play off each other, yeah, I, I, the that mechanism, <clears throat> which which uh, old Joe explains which i thought was I mean, again it's a it's a clever piece of writing on on ryan johnson's part where he goes i have my memories but now that i'm here those memories are getting fuzzy and i don't know what you're going to do until you decide to do yeah. it then it's yeah. a memory and it's like christopher nolan needs to i mean christopher nolan is is obsessed with time and i think he handles it worse than anyone i've ever fucking seen um <laughs> I was um, with him. I, I was with him for Inception. I love Inception, which is In, which is not really about time. True, it Inter kind of is. Interstellar lost me a little bit. Inter uh, Interstellar, Interstellar is horrible. And Tenet, Tenet I was like, I'm done. T no. Tenet, he, it, it's a clever, it's a clever mechanism, but it's way too easy to punch holes through well, the actual mechanics. It, like, it does the opposite to this film. This film gives you characters to root for, and you, they swap. You're not always rooting for the same people. You know, the, 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 uh, there's a lot of ambiguity, killers and all, anyway, drug 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 dealers and drug addicts, mm -hmm. anyway. Um, you know, and then you get like a film like Tenet, which has essentially no characters to root for. The main character is called the antagonist. And as good as, uh, is it John David Washington? or David Washington. As good John as... John David Washington. That's the one. Thank you. As good as he is, um, as an actor, there's nothing there. There's nobody to root for. You don't care. The best, what the best person in that film was Robert Pattinson because he was smooth, debonair. It was like he was auditioning for Bond. I'd have given him Bond off the back of that film. And the funny thing is that his character in that film necessitated that he was supposed to kind of be invisible, mm -hmm. yeah. just be this 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 identity that just kind of slices through because he's in on everything. So he just kind of slides through. You know, he's you know he's he's the man in black, if you will. You know, everywhere but not really memorable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which he's memorable, but not in that way. Yeah. So, but yeah, so it's, yeah, Nolan, I, his obsession with time, he needs to get away from and just go, go make some superhero movies again uh, or something. Because I, I mean, I, I love Christopher Nolan and I hate more of his movies than I enjoy. And I, I have not figured that out yet. I, I literally, I hate people love Dunkirk. I think we talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Love Dunkirk. And I fucking hate that film. I hate that film with a passion. Is it the? I, I mean, is it is it the 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 nonlinear way he tells the story? No, I I don't have a problem with that. You know, like he, he is it because Memento is told backwards? Yeah, is it because the know, amount, it was his is, first film? Uh, I don't I don't mind mixed storylines. I don't I don't really care. It's that literally he made the 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 single most dramatic event of the early war completely boring. Um, and that movie should have been about the the civilian fleet instead of I, I literally spent the whole movie just wondering what boat this kid was going to get on so it could be sunk because that was that that was the whole military storyline and Tom Hardy running out of gas with his face behind a mask that was it that was the military side and it's just like so I so literally at 90 minutes I hate I, I checked my watch six times in that film, wondering when it was going to be over. And, and I was excited going in. I was really excited to watch Christopher Nolan do a war movie. I was, I was looking forward to it. And I, by, by a third of the way through, I was pissed. And that <laughs> just made the fact that that movie sucked worse. So, 
but but yeah, his obsession with time at, as an actual phenomenon, an interstellar tenant, he needs to get away from. Uh, I, like I said, I, I think Ryan Johnson, when he wrote Looper, said, okay, this is the premise. And you're right. If one, and and I, I I totally agree. I don't I don't care if it's time travel, if it's or if it's a straight science fiction film. I don't care what your rules are or how ridiculous they are. But once you tell me those rules, mm -hmm. those are the rules. You can play inside that ridiculousness all the live long day. I do not care. But do not pull something out of your butt later and that that completely and 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 then just fail to acknowledge it. Yeah, I'll give you, you know an example. I mean? Yeah, I'll give you an example of that. Um, <laughs> this uh, it might not be a popular opinion, um, but it's mine. Um, Spider Man No Way Home. Why does to facilitate the plot, which is already ridiculous? Ned all of a sudden is magic. Like, oh, I'm magic. I can open portholes, and it's like, really? That that's where we're going. Like, I know they need to get Garfield in, and they need to get Maguire in. But like, really, all of a sudden, this guy's magic and he's got magic in his family. Well, where's that come from? Like, you just throw that in out of nowhere. I, that might have a, a basis in the comic. I think I read that somewhere. It might. But, but they've never acknowledged it before. So then to retroactively put it in, it's like, well. Don't well work to be me. fair, Ned's never been exposed. Oh, to be fair, until, until Doctor Strange got in a car accident, he had no idea he could. And, and apparently anyone can do magic. It is just a matter of knowledge and, and you know. And and intent. I mean, Harry Potter can do magic. He had no idea he could do magic till he was thirteen. He had no idea magic existed till he was thirteen. Then you have a Hermione Granger, who isn't necessarily. I think it's, a, I think it's eleven, but it's all right. It's fine. Uh, yeah, whatever. Whenever, whenever the first stupid owl. <laughs> but you know, then you get Hermione Granger, who's not born into a magical world, mm -hmm. but who has a who who is is gifted and works at it. Yeah. So, you know, if I was going to use an American basketball reference, she's like the Larry Bird of, of magic. She you know, a lot of raw talent and a buttload of work. She puts in the time. Harry doesn't put in the time, but he's got a lot of raw talent. So, yeah, and he gets away with a lot based on that. But yeah, it's it's just one of those things where if you if you can make it make sense and keep it making sense, then it's okay. Uh, but if you can't, it, it, just stop. And that's the problem with Nolan's time travel is that it never, he always, it all, it always looks really great. Uh, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a visually stunning film, but it's just, it, it, at the end, he just kind of just throws away his premise and moves on. So it's like, well, thanks for that, for nothing, for wasting my time. So, but yeah, no, I think, but I think, I think Ryan Johnson understood the rules of making rules and then sticking to the rules. Um, and, and I think that's why people like Looper so much is that it's, it, it's, 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 it's only as sci-fi as it needs to be. And it's consistent mm -hmm. and it's got some great performances. Let's not forget that, that, you know, you've got Joseph Gordon-Levitt playing off Bruce Willis playing off, you know, you've got older and younger versions playing off of one another because now it's no longer linear. It's entangled. And then you have Emily Blunt. Very young. I'd forgotten. She, I'd forgotten she was in this. I know, right? And, and as soon as it like, came, I was like, "Oh my god, it's her!" Like from I know. Fire Players and all, yeah. So much better than her Mary Poppins role, but which was terrible. Um, yeah, we, we won't mention that. It's not, it's not good. <laughs> uh, but but you know, but she's in it, and she's you know that's one of her early early jobs. I, I mean, so there's a lot of quality performances in here as well, which you've got a director that understands what he's trying to do because he wrote it, actually. Because this wasn't a one draft and shoot, the the script was a was a one draft, revise, 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 run it through yeah. the ringer, and then he's so intimately involved with it. Once he gets there, he can make changes if he needs to, and then you hang good performances on that, and those performances look even better because the material has been so well sourced and planned out. Yeah, well, the, this is partly my issue. Oh, I probably shouldn't get to this so early on, but it's it's partly my issue with superhero films at the minute that they're kind of just throwing them out there that quickly that it's like you're not giving them any time to breathe no time to like marinate and the taking i mean i i don't not massively into comic books but i i know people who are and they're kind of wasting these great source materials because they're throwing 
to pardon the expression, you throw enough something at the wall to see if it sticks, to hope something sticks. And unfortunately, at the minute, nothing is sticking, um, barring Spider-Man. And that's only because, they, in my humble opinion, they, they brought Garfield and, you know, Defoe, um, Maguire and Molina back. Apart from that, no one was really... I mean, if you take it, take those out of it, it's just another kind of run-of-the-mill, enjoyable to watch while you're there, but gone from your brain 10 minutes after you've left. Um well, I, I actually enjoyed. Yeah, I actually enjoyed No Way Home. So that, well, no, I that, did. I enjoyed it. I just I could see it for kind of what it is. It's just, yeah. Well, and 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 you are correct. In my it, opinion, it, there, there is a market. There is there, there is a, a phenomenon of market saturation. Uh, comic books in the mid '90s um, tanked hard because they saturated the market. I think at one point, Spider-Man alone had seven titles out, uh, which is ridiculous you had you know two or three avengers books you had then you had solo avengers with their books and some of them had more than one and then you had all of these crossovers and then you had these different artists doing you know they had eight cover variants of this one yeah i mean so i mean they, they went hog wild and and so the the market tank there's a reason marvel is not all under one umbrella it's because marvel was broke and they started selling off pieces yeah sony failed to buy them all in the first place yeah and that's that why, is why we're that is why we're in the cinematic yeah. conundrum that we are in concerning marvel now yeah. dc never had to sell off but they were in a world of hurt as well so um the, the the films kind of came back and because marvel was actually limited in what they could do based on what they had the rights to we wound up with iron man Mm -hmm. instead of love that film i know yeah the first i again yeah, yeah the, the first iron man sets the, the next two makes it work uh, well but but you know so we're we're stuck with you know so we get iron man as opposed to x-men yeah. under a marvel banner because it's owned by fox yeah or spider-man because it's owned by sony well so look at while Marvel's those move while those movies were made they were not made by yeah marvel and it took iron man to convince Marvel that maybe we have something. And so then they started to expand out from that. And then, you know, we get to where we are now. But when you're releasing three and four movies in an interconnected universe in a calendar year, that is a lot of material. And now television series that may or may not get yeah. second seasons, depending on what's going on. And so you you get into this, which which is what happened in the the 90s in, in the, the physical comic book realm is you get oversaturation you get people can't keep up with everything you get people that don't care about other characters or other titles and so are they missing things marvel up to now has been good at bringing people in with enough information in the standalones yeah. to make up if yeah. you missed this guy yeah. that you didn't like they, they've been good at that yeah. but there is a tipping point that I think I think it's gone. Is, yeah. I, 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 I think I think the teeter totter is is mm -hmm. is tottering, um, and they need to be careful. Yeah. Well, well, so, I mean, what of the? I think this, and I know because Spider Man was No Way Home was what it was like. Sony's really with a bit of Marvel influence. Um, no, it's 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 still. I think I think it's it's well. It Sony still owns Spider Man. Yeah. Um, so, but but they make the Spider Man movies have been made in conjunction. Yeah. yeah. With Marvel. Yeah. So, you know, they have, Marvel has inputs and says, this is what we would do. This is how it would play yeah. in ours, but it's still up to Sony. Yeah, yeah, which is why I think, I mean, I think why No Way Home was so successful. And then I think that what the last four or five Marvel films have made less money combined than Spider-Man No Way Home. Well, to be, and to you be kind fair, of go, well, there you go. To, Give fans what they want. Stop. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I, I guess today they actually just announced because uh, Disney bought Fox, so they 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 now own uh, the X Men and Fantastic Four. So they've got. We don't that need group. any more Fantastic Four films. We've had enough. That they keep doing them and they don't work. They, okay, they were going to make it. They they were going. They they were reboot. Or sorry, they are rebooting the Fantastic Four. And Again. this was one of my two titles, by the way. I was an Iron Man Fantastic Four guy. Uh -huh. um, they had John Watt, who did Spider Man Homecoming. And had did all the, yeah, all the Spider Man, the new Spider Man. Um, he was on board, and I guess he has dropped out. So now I'm worried again, uh, because the last Fantastic Four was just atrociously, horribly bad. Um, 
the the first one with uh, Yoan Griffith and and Jessica Alba wasn't wasn't terrible, but it was not great. Yeah. But the second one of that was horrible. The oh, second see, one quite, of that was horrible. See, I quite liked uh, the Silver Surf one, the second one. But then again, I, I mean, visually, I I think I remember watching it and thinking the visuals were like really impressive. But maybe I just liked the Silver Surfer. I don't know. Maybe it was. Well, it's Lawrence Fishburne, so really, how bad can it be? I mean, well, to be fair, it's Doug Jones uh, with Lawrence yeah, Fishburne's yeah. voice. So, but yeah, no, the second movie was not very well done either. Um, I, I I, am actually seeing Doctor Strange 2 in a couple of days. Um, the, the press screening is in a couple of days. Um, I've been trying. I, I've been trying to avoid the trailers. I mm -hmm. know apparently there are just a crap ton of leaks out there about who's appearing and what, and I'm trying to avoid those. Yeah. Because frankly, I'm tired of knowing what the movie is before mm -hmm. I get there. Yeah. I mean, I, besides general broad strokes, do not tell me that that you know A, B, and C happens. Like, well, then where's the fun in watching it happen? Yeah. Well, trailers have been doing that for years. But well half the time trailers don't even show you what's in the movie or at least not in the way that it's in the movie so they'll show you moments and, and smash them together so you'll think that a causes b when mm -hmm. in fact it's q has nothing to do with with x um so but they mash them together to make it look like it's this one thing and it's completely disparate deals but i i think in in the case of dr strange at least from what i'm hearing and i haven't heard the specifics but people some people are really upset we're hearing a lot and it's like, I don't, I don't, uh, of like, of like things that should surprise you on mm -hmm. screen, you know, yeah. like when, when Garfield comes out in No Way Home, you know, when Toby first shows up, it, you, I mean, you can kind of, you can go, oh, they have to show up. They're going to show up. There, there's rumors that they're going to, but if they'd have come out and said, yep, these guys are going to show up and they're going to be Spider-Man and you're going to see all three of them on screen at once. It's like, well, then where's the fun in that? Yeah. You know, where's the joy of that emotion? I'm going, is it, is it, is it? Yes, it is. Uh, and so you know it's like when Captain America picked up Mjolnir in Endgame it's like every I had seen I saw the movie twice I saw it back to back on opening night because I had inadver I inadvertently bought two tickets I bought a ticket and then I wound up getting one for a showing is that what you told the wife <laughs> so was that yeah, your excuse it's like, Oops, sorry. oh sorry love pressed it twice I think she was out of town actually so it was okay <laughs> but uh but but I saw it so I so I knew so and and in that first screening I, everyone was they went they went heap shit and so I was sitting there in the second one and I was waiting and I was waiting. And so this time I got to watch the crowd mm -hmm. and that moment is what superhero movies are supposed to be about. Not everyone waiting for something you told them was coming, but for them to experiencing something that, that maybe they had hoped for, but didn't know, or they, they just flat weren't expecting, but is awesome. And, and they can appreciate it for what it is. So, uh, the last time I felt like that seeing a superhero film, um, was the dark night i went to see that and me and my friend how old would i have been then 16 15 16 maybe went to see the dark night we got tickets really late like literally we walked up bought them we were on the front row so we were literally like mere cats like yeah. kids looking up at the screen and i remember the and i didn't know anything about i knew very little about it i knew heath ledger was in it because unfortunately he just passed away and uh there was a kind of publicity around that um and uh, I remember the scene where the truck flips up and just smashes down. And there's that unbelievable like shot that did with a motorcycle where it pans towards it. I got goosebumps and I was like, and I've, I've only had that experience maybe two or three times in a film. And I was like, oh, this film really is as good as people have said. Because I'm always very wary when people say a film's amazing because I tend to go and see it and go, I don't know what everyone else is on about. Uh, yeah, I, I love that film, uh, which is which is why the, the, the people saying the new Batman film is like the best Batman film ever. I'm like, get a grip with yourselves. It's nowhere near. It's nowhere it's, near. I, it's 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 a very good. It's an excellent Batman film, but it's completely different from the other one. So again, you can't. I. It's it's apples and oranges. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you said that to me last time. I should remember. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it is. I just it just didn't land with me. But um, yeah. and that's and that's fine. I mean, I, I catch garbage because I, I say Zack Snyder's Justice League is just the four-hour cut of Joss Whedon's Justice League. Ooh, so carefully uh, you say that too. I'll, I'll say it all. I'll, I'll shout it from the <laughs> fucking really mountaintop. Joking. I do not care <laughs> because it is. It is literally the exact same film. It is narratively, it's the exact same film. Well, I've never There's seen it. There's no different. 
Never seen either of them. Don't want to. I, I, I was, I was watching DC. This is the thing with Marvel. Marvel took the time. They earned their right to make this universe right. All the others, your Dark Universe, mm-hmm. your, your DC, came out with theirs. Didn't know whether, didn't want to do Marvel's like light comedy bit of dance and everything. Like, oh, we're going to be moody. We're going to be grungy. And they ended up doing like a piss poor impression of like Nolan's Batman trilogy in terms of like they tried to make it dead moody. And I went to see like Batman versus Superman, which was terrible. Went to see um, with Wonder Woman and the CGI was just a mess. And then I went to see whatever the next one was. And I was like, I'm out of this already. Like, this is just, oh, I yeah, saw the... Man of Steel. And that was, that. I thought that was, the music was great, but I thought that film was poor. Um, and I was just like, the, these aren't landing for me like at all. I just thought they were brooding and like moody and and, bloated and, and... and I don't, I don't have a problem with that necessarily. I actually, I actually enjoy Man of Steel because I, I appreciate the humanity that 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 uh, Brian or yeah, yeah that 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 he brings or uh, Zack Snyder brings to, to to Superman because he's still just a guy. So I get a lot of what he's going through. And I, so I, you know, is it is it Christopher Reeve Superman? No, I don't know that you could make Christopher Reeve Superman now, which is sad. That's the gold standard for superhero movies, and we are way far afield right now. But I don't care. Uh, I'm going to finish this thought. Um, but the, uh, uh, but you know, so I, I, I didn't mind Snyder's Man, uh, uh, Man of Steel. I thought that was fine. Batman vs Superman was shite. I thought Wonder Woman was great, um, because of what it was doing. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't mean Wonder Woman. I haven't seen that. I meant she was in the end of Batman vs Superman. And I right. just thought it was too much. Which yeah, it's it's weird. Well, it's okay. But but yeah, DC just didn't establish enough characters to justify Justice League. Um, but yeah, and then they they kind of soft rebooted with the Suicide Squad, which was atrocious, and then Birds of Prey, which was equally atrocious, and then the Suicide Squad, which was equally atrocious in a completely different way. Um, so it's, see, I just can't keep up. Like I I, I talk to a lot of podcasters, like, like well, not lords, but a few, and a lot a lot of people who get into movies, get into films, like they love the current run of superhero films, which which is great. Like. If people love them, great, because it's giving you joy, and that's all a movie should do. Uh, well, obviously, sometimes it make you cry, right. <laughs> but like, I, I just can't. Like, I can't. I'm just really kind of. I'm so past them because, like, like look at the ones you've just mentioned there. Like, I could sit and talk you through all the films I've seen, and I've probably seen the majority of the Marvel ones. I'm a bit strange in that I've got gaps here and there. Like, I haven't seen Thor, but I've seen Ragnarok. I've seen the first Captain America, half a Winter Soldier. And then I went and watched Civil War. I loved that because that was like blinking the Winter, in. The Winter Soldier is still the best Marvel movie. Still the best. I've, movie. I've only seen half of it. I don't know why yeah. I stopped. Because it's, it's a spy movie with superheroes. That's why it's so good. Yeah. It's just a spy movie with superheroes. But no, it, it's, see, the, the, the difference, the big difference between Marvel and DC is that Marvel said, this is what we're going to do and did it. And they had a couple hiccups. You know, you had Iron Man 2 and 3, which were, eh, and then you had Thor 2, which was, eh, yeah, you know, but but overall, they they kept they they stuck with what they were doing. They didn't panic. They 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 took the time to build the characters, and then we got to Avengers, and then we built them more, and we got to the next Avengers, and we did this. DC panicked. They panic anytime anything is not the biggest movie ever, and they're like, we need to reboot. And it's like, well, there's no then there's no consistency, which is why Joker did so well because it was completely yeah. it was a complete stand. It was a movie yeah, Joe, about joker but was it about joker mm-hmm. yeah and, and now you have the batman which i they just announced they're they're going to do a sequel with robert pattinson i don't know that i want them to i think that would have been great as a standalone statement by dc to say we know how to handle the properties we've proven we know how to handle the properties now we just need to establish what we want to do with the properties in toto and then make a plan and stick to it and understand that not everything's going to be the biggest movie in the history of ever. And that's okay. As long as you're building and staying true to what you're trying to do. Yeah. But they're but not DC, trying DC to see panics yeah. a lot, but they're not trying to see the thing is you're talking from the point of view of, of a comic book lover and a, and a movie lover. I'm talking from the, from the perspective of a, of a film lover, love them a bit. They don't, the majority of people making the decisions, and I'm not going to blanket them all because it's not fair, but the majority of the people who make these decisions, um, they don't care. They're not, they're not thinking along the same lines as you or me in, the, in terms of let it breed, let it marinate, 
try and come up with something. Be creative. They're just going, what can we get out now that gets us the most, you know, uh, American phrase, but I like it. Bang for bang for, for our book. What can we put out there and get yeah, the money problem, back? The problem is that DC doesn't actually get much bang for their yeah, 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 yeah. Marvel plays the long game. And 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 that's what you if you're gonna if you're gonna try to build an empire, so to speak, that's what you need to do. You need to play the long game. And DC hasn't committed to that yet. So that's the problem. But again, we'll loop back around to Looper. Ryan Johnson committed uh, to what he was doing. Um, and so that that film makes sense. Now he carries that idea of, of because he, he does a lot of things in a way, I guess, in Looper. And he, he brings a lot of that stuff to Star Wars when he comes in. Um, but it's different because now he's the expression I use is uh, he's playing in somebody else's sandbox. Um, so, it, you know, it's not, it's not his material. He has clearly defined things that he has to work within. And so he goes and he colors all the way to the lines inside that box that he's been given. Now people don't like the crayons that he chews. Um, so that is the problem with that. I, like I said, I have problems with The Last Jedi that are not the problems most people have with The Last Jedi. Um, so I don't, I say I don't blame Ryan Johnson. I blame Ryan Johnson because he wrote it and directed it. But I don't blame him for doing what he did per se. I just think some of it didn't work. Um, that movie is a seven out of 10 for me. And I, I swear to God, I had a hardcore guy whose name I will not mention because apparently he's fairly powerful in his own mind, I guess, in the Star Wars world, um, who swore up and down. He was upset that I was a seven out of 10. And he, he swore, he goes, well, can we talk? He goes, I think I can get you to those last three. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, no, if you have to walk me through three points, it's like, they, they, no, your movie didn't work not your movie, but the movie didn't work. Yeah, I, it's, it's, it's fine. You liked it more. Great. I have issues with this. You were telling me that my issues are wrong is not going to make me believe my yes, issues are wrong. Yes, thank you very much. This is, you know, it's like, this is exactly it's like, what I'm saying. That's, if I say I don't understand this piece of imagery yeah. and then you explain that piece of imagery to me, that's one thing. But if yeah. I say I understand what he's doing and I think it's stupid or it doesn't yeah. work, you can't convince me otherwise because yeah, we agree yeah. that this is what he was doing. We just disagree yeah. on whether or not it was good. And you're not gonna you're not gonna convince me of that. So there's no point. But he was adamant that he could he could get me to a 10 out of 10. And I'm like, no, we're not even having this discussion. So, but no, so like you said, Ryan Johnson takes, you know, his it, Ryan Johnson took his propensity to to push as far as he could push that he did it because he pushed Looper. He pushed the premise and the characters really as far as they could go. Mm -hmm. um, you know, both between the, the early instance of Paul Dano and then, you know, at, that circles back around to, to uh, young Joe at the end, you know, kind of taking that into, and, and he, I don't, he didn't realize, I, he never knew what happened to, to, to Paul Dano's character you know, that, that Ryan Johnson put him through to establish how things work. But he figures it out as he goes through the rest mm -hmm. of the movie. And so he makes that decision. So he pushes, I mean, that's a very, if you stop and think about it, you know, that's a very Ryan Johnson move. He, he takes a character and he, he makes them do something that they realize is the correct thing, even though it's ultimately self-destructive. So it's a, it, it, he, whether you like that he does that or not, I think is irrelevant. There was a scene in there that I really liked. Um, it's and it reminds me when they capture Paul Dano's character. There's an older version. Uh, I, I know the actor's face, uh, the actor's face, but I can't get get his name. Um, and they're essentially like they say, "Oh, call the doctor," and you're like, "What the hell's going on?" And they basically start taking off fingers, right, and limbs, and the guy's driving. There's one of his legs disappears, and then then he gets because they've they've uh, They've burned on it with his arm, like meet me yeah, somewhere. Be, yeah, be at be wherever, here. Yeah. Um, and then the guy just literally he gets to a gate, the uh, like these shutters that he shuts his eyes, and the guy just blows his head off. And then you see in the background, you know, the beeping of the monitors, and that's where the young character is. And I was thinking, that was pretty. Like, I don't want to think about it too much because I don't no, care. It's it dark. was just too cool. It was dark, it, and they're burning is. off part of his nose as well. Yep. Like, yeah, and they, you're like, like they red skulled him. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what I was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, that that I enjoyed that. Like I like when films they they go they they go yeah we're going to take a step into the into the this what when you think about it, it's really dark the same with you know the fact that he he starts to you know he kills a child and he tries to kill another and um it, well he tries to kill two more but it's just, yeah it's it's very um it's a very interesting step that they've taken a few times in the film and I thought I, I quite I quite like I quite like films like that that, that go yeah we we know what kind of world we're in. Yeah. Um, because I can't stand films that kind of go, oh, we want to be really dark, and then they go, oh, but we can't show that, or we can't right. go into that, and you're like, well, you know, commit, yeah, just yeah, yeah. Uh, in the word, in the words of Dr. Perry Cox, commit, <laughs> commit. Scrub, scrub reference for people. Oh, yeah, um, I'm just I was never a Scrubs guy, unfortunately. Yeah, it's all right. I, I, I quite enjoyed it. I, I understand why people like it. It was just never my bag. So uh, same with the Office either version. It's just not my bag. Yeah, uh, well, yeah the, the Office US, and because uh, I'm not American, so whereas the Office UK, if you've ever worked in an office, uh, it's it's so true. It's like frightening. <laughs> Well, the yeah, best really comedy is. is always true. The best comedy oh, yeah. is always true. Well, the, I think the, the best comedies we do, where the British do, is because ours are always tragic. Like, we don't have any good characters. Like, we don't have any successful characters in our comedies. You know, you, 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 the best comedy is your Basil Follies. You know, yeah. your, your uh, Ricky Gervais's uh, manager, your, uh, your Brent characters. You know, our, our, uh, your Steptoe Son, which, which was... The, the precursor of Stanford and so much you guys over there. Uh, these are these aren't successful characters. They are, you know, the the, the struggle and it. It's that tragedy we tend to find. Not we don't find tragedy funny, but it's it's the situations that you get from that. Whereas a lot of American comedies are very much striving to be the best, and and which is very American, which which I quite commend them for. But um, I think I was go down the route of being kind of not being so th- like throwaway sometimes because we don't do as many episodes either. So, yeah. yeah, but yeah, no, it, uh, I, I, the, the expression, you know, the expression I use, yeah, it's only funny because it's true. Yeah. Uh, so that, and that's the best comedy. It's only funny because it's true. Although I'll be fair to the Americans, right? I watched, oh, it was Josh from the Talking Smack podcast. Um, he recommended Office Space to me. Oh my God. Which I'd never seen before. I'd never seen it because he, we were podcasting and he, he made a reference like, uh, I have people skills, damn it. And it went right over my head. I know, I use that all the and, time. Uh, and he that. said to me, what, and I was like, what's that? For? And he was laughing. I said, what's that from? And he told me, and I, I actually reviewed Office Space on my own, uh, like did a solo review of it. And I yeah. really enjoyed that. Like, because you meet people like that, like you like the guy, the poor guy that they're forever. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I had the step. There's a reason I own this. <laughs> Nobody at home could see that. That was a, that was a red swing line stapler. Uh, good impression. So, yeah, uh, could you just move? Your, Root, but... Could you just move your desk? Um, and I look like, um, and I just love like that when John C. McGinley um, and the other the other guy are there as kind of these inspectors, and they sat there going, "So, so what do you do in the company?" And you you pass the papers on from this person to that person. Well, why can't that person pass to that person? And all that yeah. kind of thing. And and um, and I I've never seen um, Ron Livingston in in that kind of. Because I know him from Band of Brothers, which I love that series. Uh, and I was like, oh my God, it, I didn't know he did like a film like this. Um, yeah, I just thought that was, that was like, I will burn, the, I can't do the impression, but I will burn this place to the ground. And I was just like, and then you see it on fire at the end. I'm like, yep, yeah, he yep. wasn't lying. But yep. you can only, you only push somebody. I'm not saying arson's nice or correct, but <laughs> right. um, it's just, you can only push somebody. So like he, he keeps getting moved and it's how dismissive they are of him and, yeah, See, that's that. that's the difference. That there, there's a difference between American and, and British humor right now. You didn't go there. I would have immediately gone to. I'm not saying arson is always justified. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I, yeah, I cannot be caught uh, approving arson. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, uh, yeah, that, that probably is the difference. I don't know. We, we over here, me and my my co-host Ryan, you know, I, you you heard how vehemently I I hate mm. Dunkirk. Yeah, um, I call that. I, I jokingly call that. That's the gold standard for us for disagreements, oh, because okay, literally, okay. literally, I, I I encourage you if you want to hear if you want to hear two critics mm-hmm. vehemently disagree about the end result of a film, to go to the visually stunning movie podcast and look for Dunkirk. Oh, I can't wait to listen to that. We will. We will. We literally we talk the entire episode and mm-hmm. we agree on every single point in the film. 
but and he likes saying, it and you don't. I, and, 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 and he goes, and that's why I loved it. And I go, and that's why I fucking hated it. Yeah. And it's literally, we, but we agree on every single thing through the whole freaking podcast. <laughs> and at the end he goes, that's why I loved it. And I'm like, and that's why I hated it. Literally, we are, yeah. we, we could yeah. not be more diametrically opposed in the end results. Like, oh, I get it. I, I agree with this. I agree with that. I agree with the other thing. Hated it. It's just like, how yeah. does that work? Yeah, it, so, it's it's but that that like I I like Duncan. I don't think it's as good as as some of his others. I enjoy it, but I do think that it um it starts to trip itself up because he does it out of order, and I don't think that film needed to be shot like that. Like I know it's your bag, Nolan, but he needed like he when it got to Tenet, he needed somebody to rein him in. He needed somebody to say, Chris, I know you're really successful, and God bless you for pushing the old fashioned way of actually physically doing something with real people and real machines and, you know, fair play here. But for God's sake, can you just pull it back a bit? Tenet was all his bad. No, okay. Not bad. Uh, all I'm trying to think of the right phrase, all his worst kind of propensities to do certain things, like to go too far down the line of like, yep. well, don't forget about like you were saying earlier about don't, keep continue explaining time travel because it'll do my head in a little bit like tenor i know it wasn't time travel it was inversion and then uh, in the same it's time not time travel yeah, no, at the no, same no. time no at the same time they're explaining it they're also saying to you but don't worry about it it's not something to be explained it's something you feel i'm like well you spent a 10 minute scene telling me what it is and then at the yeah. end of it gone oh don't i don't think about it too much feel it I'm like well that don't make any sense like for me it was just it it, it just felt a complete like look what have you what that like i feel about tenet like you do about dunkirk i will not kind of i won't concede that it was good people are like oh it looks beautiful yeah but there's no substance it's like yeah. it's like you know it's like i don't know certain things might look beautiful but they're not you know oh, i don't I know it. you never I, know I, yeah i said i'm not i'm not a, i'm not a huge tenet fan either i have no desire to go watch dunkirk again i'll probably never watch tenet again uh, again, which is sad because I generally I, I like what what Nolan does. I like what generally I like what Zack Snyder does. Um, generally, I, I'm generally I, I like what what Ryan Johnson does. So it's like you know I can't I can't really complain. I, although he's kind of batting better than than those two percentage wise at this point with me. Yeah. Um, I just watched uh, the last Robert Eggers film. Uh, it was his third. He did Witch and the lighthouse and then he just put out the northman oh um, yeah everyone's gone crazy i've seen a, uh, have i seen a light i've seen a, I, i've seen i was gonna watch a lighthouse i haven't watched that yet uh yeah. so i liked witch i hated the lighthouse yeah. hated it hated it hated it. i have no idea why anyone likes that movie at all and so i was really hoping the northman would be more witch for me to to me not in the same vein uh and it is so I, he's two for three <laughs> for me it's not by yeah, I, I there's a, there's another movie from 2016 called The Lighthouse that I highly recommend instead. Um, it's, a, it's another it's another weird it's another black and white art house movie just like The Lighthouse. Okay. So, but it's from 2016 and it does not have Willem Dafoe, which is mm -hmm. sad because I love Willem Dafoe. Uh, but yeah, I just I can't get my I can't do it. I cannot embrace I can't embrace Edgar's Lighthouse at all. It's, <laughs> it does not work for me. No, it's it's all right. it's, it's I I. I, uh, I, I'm a big Bond guy. Uh, love love them. Not all of them, of course. Um, but the last like three Daniel Craig films that I can't be doing with, I'm reviewing them actually. Uh, so look out for that, people. Um, Skyfall is coming. I'm not. And uh, Spectre is coming. I'm not doing No Time to Die again. I refuse. Um, you've got my review of that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I I I don't. I'm not a massive fan. I just I thought they were poor, piss poor, and people are like, yeah, because that's the thing. It's like No Time to Die. You can make a film that's well made well shot good good you know good performances but it, it can still come out and you go nah not for me the, the, not the for phrase me i use it, it, it it's uh there there are films that you look at and you go yeah this is good this is good this mm -hmm. is good this is good. it's exactly the sum of its parts yeah nothing is elevated and and it happens i mean i yeah. i probably just well, like, no time to die i i, well, I enjoyed enough. no time to die uh, I enjoyed Bond's uh, or all of Craig's run. I, I I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed some of the other other Bonds. But uh, but yeah, no, I I get why why you might not necessarily like them all. It's fine. But yeah, the expression I always use is, is it's exactly the sum of its parts. Mm -hmm. What's oh, yeah, really like, yeah. what what really stinks is when a film is less than the sum of its parts. Yeah, when you're like it looks great, the performances are good, and it's just a 
for some reason, it's just a terrible movie. And it's like, how does that work? It's like, I don't know how it works, but it's just a horrible film. But if you look at every piece, it's like, oh, it should be this. It's like, nope. It's really not. Yeah, it's a funny. Well, you can have the greatest ingredients in the world and bake a cake. And if it comes out burnt or dry as hell, then you've cocked it up. Doesn't matter. You used it, doesn't matter what, like, it doesn't matter what you, how much money yeah. you throw at something. The tool, the tools <laughs> don't matter. I mean, if you yeah, get, if yeah. you get, you know, how many, how many monkeys and how many typers does it take to get Shakespeare? Uh, a lot. It took Shakespeare one, one quill and, a, and some parchment. So, you know, it's not yeah. the tools. It's, I've never it's understood what you do the, with them. Never understood. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've never understood the love of Shakespeare. I don't mind him, but when you've been subjected to Shakespeare at school, you kind of like, mm, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, it, it, it's hard. It's, it's mostly for what he did for the language. Uh, and the fact that he's now, uh, that, that er, basically every narrative that comes out, you can trace back to it. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, and, and, and that's, I mean, it's, it's just, it's a thing. It's, it's just one of those things you have to accept and move on. Uh, in, in America, some people don't like, uh, don't like Mark Twain. It's like, why? It's quintessentially American literature. And they're like, yeah, but it's, it's, eh, some of it's better than others. Some of it's not great, yeah. but all of it is important. And you cannot help but but wind up there once you start looking at things. Oh yeah, yeah. and then there's Twain, and then there's Twain, and then there's Twain. And it's you know there's the, every every culture's every you know every literary culture's got one. Uh, it's a thing, and what can you do? Yeah, I, I <laughs> so, was all, I, I always did more. I've never read a Mark Twain book. I've read Salinger. I've read a couple of Salinger books, quite like those. Um, J.D. Salinger, like of Mice and Men. Uh, the uh, what's the other one called? It's gone on my head. Um, the Grapes or something. Oh, the right. Steinbeck. Yeah. Steinbeck, sorry, Steinbeck. Steinbeck, on no. Steinbeck sorry. Uh, who did I say there? Who did I say? Salinger is who you said. JD, oh, JD, he's catching the rye, isn't he? Yeah, he's catching the rye. Catching the rye. Yeah, I yeah, couldn't yeah. finish that. I wanted to, and I got, I got like a third of the way through, and I'm like, this is garbage. Yeah, I found it. I found <laughs> I just it. Just checked it. It's funny. I uh, no, I found that. I found that a, a, a difficult one. Um, yeah, it's funny what strikes, what what strikes, and what doesn't. But uh, yeah, no, Luke, I thought Looper was, uh, I was really pleasantly surprised. There was a little bit where I was thinking, this is like, it's really slowed up a little bit, but I was enjoying it. I wasn't, I didn't mm -hmm. get bored, but then all of a sudden they have a scene where Bruce Willis just, it's like, they were like, it's like they realised, oh, we've got Bruce Willis. We need, we need to have a scene where he just gets a big machine gun, starts gunning people down. And I was like, that felt, a, it almost tipped over. It was the bit where he had the big machine gun that looked right. like a machine gun from now. And I was like, hmm. Because I like the whole blunderbuss, is that what called? Uh, and the whole yeah, like... well, that that's what they called it. Well, that's what the loopers use, mm -hmm. and I have theories on that because it's 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 limited use, mm -hmm. it's primitive, it's easy to hide, and like, you like don't that? really have to. You don't really. I mean, it's at the at the range they're using it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, they they say blunderbuss. It's it's a shotgun at Idiot, that range. Yeah. You die. You know, it's Idiot it's, it's proof. literally one yeah. shot done. So it, it's okay, and and it, and it's just kind of a cute. I, I hate to I hate to use that word, but it's kind of a, just a cute affectation <laughs> that that Johnson puts in there. You know, it's it's you know we, we've got time travel and blunderbusses. You know what I mean? So it's just it's it, 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 I think it's more an affectation than anything else. Uh, yeah. You know, because they could have they could you know time travel them back and drop them in, in directly in a vat of acid. What a, you know same result, except you wouldn't have gotten the gold. Um, but you know, if you're just worried about the death, fine. You know. But but yeah, the, it's just it's just you're you're a, you're a glorified hitman, you're a glorified executioner. We're going to give you the the most effective and least technologically advanced tool to do the job that because you've been hired fit, to do. Because it fits them, doesn't it? They are just a, a blunt instrument. They're, they're an a blunt. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They're, they're, um, I mean, what is it? They, what 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 is the phrase Joseph Gordon-Levitt says? It was, doesn't necessarily attract the career. Didn't necessarily attract the most, the most forward thinking, thinking people. Of yeah, yeah. Because but they I know love, that yeah. that there's an end. And Speak then eventually you'll be put down. Yeah. And speaking about, about um, building a universe, just to go back to earlier on a little bit, but linking in with this part, um, I love the idea behind the gold bars and the silver bars and the idea that like when, you know, you get your big payday, you get 30 years and then your time's up. I was like, I loved that whole premise. I wouldn't want to be part of it, but, but I did well, like more forward like, thinking. But yeah, but I did enjoy, I did enjoy that premise. Like I love, like I like films that, um, that are like this, that are a little bit out there, like. But this film is never one of those films that's out there for the sake of being out there. You know, they go, "Oh, let's be really weird," and right? Maybe like the lighthouse. I don't know. 
Uh, they, never, they never overplay it. Ryan Johnson yeah, never yeah. overplays it. it. It makes it makes sense. You know, he just you know it's it's a system. He justifies why the people are in the system, and he sticks to that. And it, again, it, we go back to the, the this in this idea of internal logic, and his internal logic, barring the fact that there's time travel, you know, it, it's fine. His internal logic works, and and he explains things that might not make sense, which is well, why the hell would anyone? sign up for this was Joseph Gordon-Levitt got caught stealing when he was a kid. And so he got brought in and was kind of, you know, he was raised up in that gang mentality and became a looper. So well, it's, like, it, it makes sense. Yeah. I like, I like that as well that, that he was like an orphan, his mom gave him away. Um, right. And then the fact that um, Def, uh, Jeff Daniels character finds him and says, you know, I, I put a gun in your hand and it, and it's so, and this is, uh, I won't do it justice, but for people who haven't seen the film, but, but it's done in a way of like, I gave you something that was yours. Like I raised you up, I helped you. And it's, and it's said as quite an uplift. And it is uplifting in a twisted kind of way that he, he yeah. rescued this kid because he, he says to him, I could see the path you were going down. Um, and I, I gave something that was, uh, that was yours. I gave you a career. And, you know, Joseph Gordon-Levitt isn't exactly hurting at the beginning of this. I mean, he's he's got a classic 2005 Mazda. Um uh, which in 2074 would be like having I don't know yeah. a Ford T or something, wouldn't it? Um, and and the you know he's got a lot of money and the people around him don't have an awful lot. Um, he's a he's a drug addict because he's taking I, I don't know what they are, but I think it might be some kind of acid. The eye drops, yeah, the eye drops. Um, and and that's another that's another uh, juxtaposition between older Joe and younger Joe in that older Joe is like had this, and I love that I love that storyline as well. Um, the more I think about the more I love um, about you know that that Bruce Willis is the older Joe was rescued because he moved to China. Um, don't go to France, um, yeah. but they couldn't yeah. go to France. They couldn't afford to go to France. And then when Shanghai said, "Can you come film here?" Um, so yeah, I thought that was interesting. Anyway, um, the part about 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 the woman, uh, the the Chinese lady, she she rescues him. She helps him through his uh, his withdrawal from, from obviously his drug addiction. Yep. Um, and he he says, you know, he saved he saved your he saved your life. Obviously, old Joe says to Young Joe, she saved your life. Um, and right, Young Joe's just selfish and narcissistic and doesn't care and he's just wanting the next eye drop, the next drop or the next. Well, you know, it, well, it, it, and it's and it's not just the drugs because he you know this is my life right now. Mm-hmm. That's what he's here. This is my life. Not your, says, like, that's get, your, yeah, that's yeah. your life. Get this the fuck out my way. Get the fuck out my way, old man. And then yeah. He so fires back to him just with like, should it be? He said, doesn't he says you like you child or something? He says to him, doesn't he? It's a really interesting like. Oh, I, just, I thought it was great. No, yeah, and it, and it is again. It's just it's just it's just good smart writing, uh, and like I said, it it, it it was it was clearly not a one and done draft. So, uh, like I said, that's that's why I liked it. That's why that's why I I I, I enjoyed it is because it's clear that Ryan Johnson put put a lot into it to get what we got out yeah. of it. Well, apparently he'd been working, according to the IMDB, he'd been working on ideas since like 2002. That's eight years. This is what I mean. Like, maybe that's why, and I don't know, I'm just I'm just wondering, because I've never seen the Star Wars. I've only seen one, the first one, right, so far. Uh, maybe that was why he didn't do so well in a lot of people's eyes with the Star Wars things, because if you're given, if, if, if I have a vision for a film or a book or whatever, or a podcast, and I go out there and I make it, I make it all for me. I think about the ideas. I tweak it here and there. I spend a lot of time doing it. It take me a long time. You know, it might take me a while to get the, to the best episode. You know, but I'll get there. Whereas if you say to me, Sean, I want you to do this podcast for me. He's here's all the ideas, but this is where I want you to sit. This is what you're going to look at. This is what you can talk about. There's only so far I can go within that um, because it's not mine, and you, you you don't understand. Maybe that's why he didn't do so well because he was it, and, and it didn't and it, and it was the continuation of something. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was good. It, it, well, it no, was no part plan two again. of that no trilogy. Plan. So, no plan. Yeah. And well, and then they didn't really have a plan for mm. for part three, as we all know. So, so yeah, it was, it's, a, it's a different animal. So, like I said, I don't mind a lot of the things that he tried to do and a lot of the things that he actually did do in, in The Last Jedi. But yeah, I, I, I know why people were upset. Uh, you know, I, I, I kind of would have loved to see a Ryan Johnson trilogy, or at least the first film in a trilogy to let him lay the groundwork, because I think that would have been 
that would have been interesting. But he'll never go there, and I think he's smart to never go there. I don't think. I think if they asked him back, he'd be smart to say no, mm-hmm. because he can't win. And that, I mean, I don't care if they threw you know a billion dollars at him; he he wouldn't win. Uh, it's just it's just the way that situation is now. He just needs to go and do what he's doing, and that's fine. We're getting knives out too. I'm okay with that. So. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what you should have gone with two knives out. That'd have been better, wouldn't it? Two knives out, two knives out, right? <laughs> More knives out. That'll yeah. be the third one, yeah, probably. And the fourth one will be, Where are all the knives? <laughs> <laughs> They're in the dishwasher, yeah. The fifth one will be got like here, but it's more, <laughs> right? There you go. So, yeah. yeah, no, Looper Looper's great. Uh, I think, I think Ryan Josh put together a uh, a really smart script, a really well put together script. It got really good performances out of it. And I think it's 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 one of the better time travel movies uh, out there, and it's one of Bruce Willis's better performances as well. Yeah, he's he's quite subdued in it. He's he's quite subdued in it, um, and and I like that. But it's it's well, it's funny. I would bring this back to Unbreakable that we reviewed before. Right. Like, it's the closest to that kind of performance I've seen, where he's very. I've not said I've seen every film of his, but it's very understated. It's very kind of much more calm. And like, there's only that one scene where he goes kind of full Bruce Willis action hero, um, which right. almost tipped me out of it, um, but didn't. You know, I'll, I'll let it off. Uh, <laughs> it's not perfection. What can you do? Yeah. Um, but I did, I did enjoy his performance in it. Um, I thought the, the kid was the, the, I don't know the actor's name. Uh, the, I thought the kid was pretty good. The vision, the effects as well, I thought were, because obviously it's been what? When did this come out? Twenty, tw- yeah, ten years. So I was thinking, oh, I wonder if the effects are going to hold up because there's a lot of effects towards the end. You know, things getting raised in the end, and yeah. I thought, oh, maybe this is going to be a bit, you know. But it wasn't. It was the, the effects held up really well. That was, was yeah, because it's because it's not really effects heavy, which is no, which, no, no, again, no. Yeah. So I said it's barely sci-fi. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 true. Uh, but I, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I don't know if you had any more any more thoughts or any more notes. No, I I I, I just encourage if if. If all you know of Ryan Johnson is Star Wars: The Last Jedi, and especially if that's all you know, go watch Looper, and then go watch Knives Out, and you'll you'll have an appreciation for what he does and what he can do. And I'm not saying that makes The Last Jedi a better movie, but I think if you look at the difference between him working in his material versus him working in that situation, you might be a little more understanding or tolerant of him moving forward. Like I said, it doesn't have to change your opinion of The Last Jedi. It doesn't, it, like I said, I'm still a seven out of 10. Uh, and it's a disappointing seven, but it's, a, you know, it's, don't don't judge him if that's all you know him of. Let's put it that way. Yeah, that's a good shout. And if, if you're one of the really, really small amount of people out there like myself who haven't seen many Star Wars films, if any, uh, just enjoy it for what it is. Don't worry about the director. <laughs> Uh, or the writer, I should say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a, I don't know, it's, it's a, it's a funny one. I see, I brought up on Star Trek as a kid, um, so I, Star Wars never came into it mm-hmm. at all. So it just didn't. Uh, um, yeah, but uh, no. Um, thank you for joining me, Mark. I really appreciate it. Um, would you like to tell the guys uh, and the people listening uh, where they can find your podcast um, uh. and anything you've got upcoming? Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, for starters, you can visit the website, vsmoviepodcast.com. Um, anything I post will be there. If you don't want to go to a website all the time and you don't want to subscribe on the website, which you are totally welcome to do, uh, like us and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. It's at VS Movie Podcast. Um, we have a YouTube channel for the, the episodes that make it to YouTube. So you can just look up Visually Stunning Movie Podcast on YouTube and you'll find us. There's also a link on the webpage. Uh, that you can use. Uh, coming up, we have got, uh, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we've got uh, Doctor Strange 2 uh, in the Multiverse of Madness is coming up, uh, which looks good uh, just for uh, for your audience. Uh, uh, Downton Abbey is coming uh, next week that we'll, we'll be screening. Uh, oh, and, God, uh, couldn't care less. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I know there's a, I don't watch Bob's Burgers, but apparently there's a movie coming we'll be talking about. No, but there's a lot of good stuff. And, you know, Top Gun Maverick is coming. So we've got a lot of stuff on our plate. Uh, At the end of May, actually, not that you care, Sean, uh, (laughs) I will actually be in Anaheim, California, 
over the American Memorial Day weekend for Star Wars Celebration, which is four days of Star Wars panels and guests. May the 4th, is it? I'll take it. No, no, no. Uh, no. May the 4th. May the 4th is annually Star Wars Day. Uh, oh, okay. But uh, no, and Memorial Day weekend is the last, it's typically the last full week. Uh, it's, the, it's the last Monday in May is Memorial Day. So the four day weekend is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Right. So for us, it's like the 20, this year, it's like the 26th through the 29th or something like that. So, so is, is, uh, that, a, is that a Comic-Con at Anaheim, is it? It, it, it is, but it's, it's uh, specifically Star Wars Celebration. It is specifically, it's held every, every year, every two years. Uh, and it moves around a little bit this year. It's in Anaheim, which is nice because it's right next to Disneyland. So we'll be doing spending some time at Disneyland while we're out there. But unfortunately, we do have to go to California for that, uh, which is the only downside of this process is having to wind up in California. Is California? Oh, let's not get into that. California is um, nuts. <laughs> California is nuts. Yeah, I, I do read stuff, but you try and keep not in mind. I know, uh, but California is nuts. <laughs> I'm, I'm some crazy, crazy people out in California. <laughs> but no, so we've got that coming up. Yeah, and and then it's uh, for us. It is Comic Con season. It's nice. Like our Comic Cons back. Well, I've got uh, two or three or more of those this year uh, that I'll be traveling to and covering. So uh, it's a good time. Uh, I actually just dropped an episode, of, an interview with a couple guys. Did a documentary uh, called uh, Science Friction, which is about how scientists are uh, misportrayed. And science is misportrayed in basically American media, like uh, on educational programs, oh, okay, cool. uh, like ancient aliens and things like that. Uh, so uh, that that was interesting to talk to those guys about that phenomenon. Uh, yeah, so it's a good t- it's a good time. But yeah, so you find us basically. Yeah, go to Twitter just at VS Movie Podcast. Click follow. That that's the best thing you can do. You'll get notified of everything we do there. So and promise we don't spam. We don't even show pictures of cats. So, yeah, there's you, lots of you, podcasts that do that, aren't there? Yeah, a lot of podcasts seem to have pets. Uh, I have I have pets, but they don't they they, they don't. Do <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I am. Um, so yeah, review it yourself. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram. Twitter, we're at yourself review, um, and Instagram, you can find us review it yourself podcast twenty twenty one because I screwed up creating it. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, you can find us there. We're on all the places you listen to your podcasts i say we it's just me i don't know why i always say we um, I, say, I say we too i i have a i have a i have a co-host but not for the little movies uh, so yeah <laughs> but we're but we're everywhere yeah it's the, the spotify's the google's the itunes we're everywhere as well so yeah if you're not there you're nowhere well yeah it's true yeah um you got you got to try and get yourself out there haven't you um but no thank you to everybody for listening and um, thank you mark for um joining me once again uh we've kept the power run that's two out of two for good movies. Uh, <laughs> it is. So yeah, well, uh, two, and just... it's two, two Bruce Willis. We gotta be careful. We might find one of his dogs. So let's let's get away from yeah. Bruce Willis next time we do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point, actually. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. But uh, yeah, uh, no problem. Thank you very much, Mike, for joining me, and cheers to everyone for listening. Thanks, Sean.